We've been calming down from some fast solar wind from a coronal hole, and we're about to get some more wind from yet another. That story and more in the news this week. This space weather forecast is sponsored in part by Millersville University. Come get certified in broadcast space weather. Visit millersville.edu slash swen. Space weather this week looks a little bit like wash, rinse, and repeat. As we take a look at the Earth-facing disk, right about the beginning of the month, we had this massive coronal hole that rotated through the Earth strike zone, and it sent us some fast solar wind and gave us a bit of aurora. And as we take a look at the sun now, my goodness, it's like a double take. Yet we have yet another coronal hole that's going to be rotating into the Earth strike zone and give us some fast solar wind over the next couple days. So aurora photographers, if you didn't get a chance to get some aurora, we, this might give you yet another chance. This hole looks like to be a little bit larger, so we're going to keep our fingers crossed that it can give us some aurora down to mid-latitudes, at least for maybe a day or so. Now, the nice thing is that it's not the only thing that we've got on the menu. We have a couple big filaments that we're also watching, because if they erupt, they could be some Earth-directed solar storms. And we have a few bright regions on the Earth-facing disk. In particular, region 3153, that is the big M-flare player right now. It hasn't does any, done anything but just pop pop, pop, pop. But it does look like it could be a risk for radio blackouts. So amateur radio operators and emergency responders, be aware we could get some radio blackouts from this region if it continues to grow the way it is. And also it could be a solar storm contender. The nice thing though, is as we take a look at the far-sided disk, this is stereo A and it's looking at the disk just a little bit from the side. You can see that big coronal hole. That's the one that's gonna be sending us some fast solar wind here over the next couple days. And again, you can see uh, region 3153 in the south. And you can also see a cluster of regions in the north. They've actually been giving us, or, or launching a few small solar storms, not really big ones, so but we've got some more regions even behind them. So if we don't get any activity from these regions because they're a bit too busy kind of just popping off instead of giving us anything substantial, we do have more chance coming around and this means solar flux is gonna stay up into the good range and it means we can't let our guard down when it comes to radio blackouts. Switching to our moon, we are now passing through the full moon phase with the full moon being on the 7th. And by the 13th, the moon will still be about 75% illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you wanna catch those dim objects in the sky, well, you're gonna have this bright companion to contend with. So you're gonna to need to check your local rise and set times. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we are anticipating the fast solar wind from that massive coronal hole that's going to be rotating in through the Earth's strike zone. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting minor storm conditions with up to about a 65% chance of a major storm. And this should last easily as we roll into the weekend and then by the beginning of next week, things should be settling down at high latitudes. Now, mid-latitudes, we're only expecting active conditions, but we do have up to about a 25% chance of minor storm conditions, but in this case, the aurora will be more sporadic and probably front-loaded. So when that solar wind hits, it'll hit hard and then kind of die down. And then at, uh, sadly, what that means is that as we roll into the weekend, things will likely have already quieted down for mid-latitudes. However, we do have our eyes on a few filaments that look like they could be erupting pretty soon. And we also have some very interesting activity with some of these active regions that could be launching solar storms, and if so, these conditions could change quite quickly. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, we do have a few big flare players on the Earth-facing disk. The main one right now is region 3153, and that's really driving all the yellow you see on this chart. As a matter of fact, NOAA's giving us about a 30% chance of M-class flares and even a 10% chance of X-class flares easily over the next few days. So this means you GPS users, beware on Earth's day side. We could be at risk for radio blackouts and it, the, the issues will be tough for you, especially near dawn and near dusk. The nice thing was with all these active regions in, in view, the solar flux is definitely staying up well into the triple digits. We're back up to 150 with, when it comes to solar flux. And because we have some new regions that are going to be rotating into view on, from Earth's or Sun's far side, the, this uh, solar flux plans to stay up easily into the mid 150s uh, over this next coming week. So uh, radio propagation on Earth's day side is 
is going to be top notch. Now also because we do have that big flare player, we do have a slight risk right now of radiation storms. It's only about a 5% chance for uh, an S1 level right now, but that will likely continue as region 3153 rotates to the sun's west limb. So if you're a frequent flyer, beware. Everything is nice right now, but just stay vigilant because conditions could change. So the space weather this week is looking a bit like a double take. Once again, we have a big coronal hole that's rotating in through the Earth strike zone, and it's going to be sending us some fast solar wind. Aurora photographers at high latitudes, you could get a decent show from this that might last in, in through the weekend before things begin to really settle down. Aurora photographers at mid latitudes, though, your best chance is likely on Thursday because it looks like the fast solar wind is going to hit hard and then kind of die off a bit. So expect to get some, some possible shows around Thursday, but catch them quickly. But the nice thing is that this uh, particular storm is not going to be a very strong storm, so by the 11th, everything will have settled down enough to give Orion a nice, safe uh, journey home, so we don't have to worry about that spacecraft. Now, uh, amateur radio operators and emergency responders, well, you know, things are looking pretty good for you. We're up into the, well into the triple digits for solar flux, which means good radio propagation on Earth's day side, and we have even more regions that are going to be rotating into Earth view over this next week, which means that we're going to continue to have that solar flux maintain uh, its, its level in the easily in the mid-150s. So that's good news. The only issue we have to worry about now, and this is an issue for both uh, radio operators and GPS users, is that we do have a couple big flare players on the Earth-facing disk, mainly region 3153, and uh, this means we do have a risk for radio blackouts. So especially you GPS users, you're going to need to stay vigilant anywhere near dawn and near dusk, and also on Earth's night side once that storm hits, anytime you're anywhere near Aurora. I'm Tamitha Scove, the Space Weather Woman. Thank you for watching.